Hello and welcome to another video tutorial on Autodesk PLM 360. My name is Brian Shannon and I'm with the PLM 360 team. Today we're going to cover configuring workflow in PLM 360. And actually what we have to cover is something that's new. Our new HTML5 workflow editor is going to make uh, building workflow on workspaces uh, even easier with uh, the new interface, new buttons, new features, new functionality. So let's get right to it. Let's begin by logging in to Autodesk PLM 360 and of course we are going to need to be administrators in the system so real quick if you do not see the administration pull down you are not an administrator so uh, go in um, find an administrative uh, login or account or ask your administrator uh, to, to give you access for the next step. So next let's go to the administration pull down and click on setup. Now formally the workflow editor was something that we found through the general tab but notice that it's actually gone and it's back over here under the particular workspace so if I come down and check out change orders which is a revisioning workspace it has workflow built in you'll see down here we have configure workflow since workflow is specific to a particular workspace we've decided to actually put it right here where you do the rest of your editing and modifications to that workspace so next click on configure workflow our new workflow editor is based on HTML5 and gives you a nice modern drag and drop type interface to configure your workflow per workspace. So let's take a tour of this new editor. Up at the top, at uh, the title bar, you'll see the name of the workspace that this workflow is uh, bound to. On the main toolbar, you'll see the ability to save your workflow. Reload a workflow in the event that you've made a lot of changes and you just don't want to undo. You can just reload it. Preview actually launches a separate tab and will give you an image preview, a layout of what it might look like uh, when somebody is inside of a workspace and they're advancing workflow, what the entire layout of the map will look like. Moving to the right, we see that uh, we have a, a button here to select and a button here to pan. So if we click on pan, we can actually go in and take a look at uh, further down if the workflow is going off of the page. Um, pan and you can also come back to select and you can scroll in and out and that's a zoom. We also have a zoom down here so right now we're at a hundred percent but if we needed a little more real estate we can zoom out and see the map in its entirety. Moving to the right we have the ability to create a state right here and create a state and create what we have here. Notes. Notes, as you see on uh, this change order workflow, are just uh, little messaging, little sticky notes that we can add in and uh, bind it to a particular state to message to the user what the next step is or some of the expectations of that workflow state. Next we have a couple of popular commands. We have undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, and of course delete. Two buttons up at the top that I want to introduce you to next are the workflow summary. Workflow Summary provides a matrix of the transition name, the from and to state, and then the permission that is underneath that. And taking it a step further, the permission summary will give you a list of all of the permissions that you'll find on this role. Is it used or not? It allows you to create a new permission, and of course we'll see these later on when we go under Users, Groups, and Define Roles for this particular workspace. Now let's go take a look at how we would go about editing and modifying an existing workflow that we have inside of one of our workspaces. Coming over to any one of the transitions, simple double click will give you the information about the ID, the name, the permissions, and any scripts that are running and any rules on email notification. So likewise, if we come over to a state and double click on it, it'll pull up the properties for that state including the ID, the name, and then any characteristics like lock state or a managed state like we have down here. When you're done with all of your changes you can come over here and click on save and it will save the map down, click on OK, and you can close down and you'll be back into the workspace area. So in that example I didn't do too much, that's my change order workspace and I'm going to leave that alone. Let's come up and take a look at modifying an existing workflow and for this I'm going to choose my activities workspace. Alright now opening up this activities workspace you can see that this is a case where we may want to be uh, using the zoom and pan command or uh, uh, zoom out in order to see the the bottom of the workflow. So here's a fun fact if you use the right mouse it actually pans for you and we can lay it out like so because what I want to say is alright we've got zero to a hundred percent pretty easy. We've got a defer state over here, so we have on hold, 
reinstate. Well, what happens if we go to defer and then we just decide to cancel it out? So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to create a state. And we'll create it down here. So let's call this cancel. And I'll just click out here to close that dialog box. Now lining this up, you can see that if we bring this down and if I want this to line right up with defer and then horizontally over to the 100% complete, I'll just drag it down here. All right, next we need a way to get from deferred to down to cancel. So if you hover over the uh, particular state, you'll see a transition arrow, and this allows us to draw down to the canceled state, and we'll call this canceled. We'll add our permissions. We'll say, well, there's a general workflow activity, and of course I could add any precondition, validation, or action scripts. We want to uh, notify, notify, and we're done. So as I showed before, we can come up and take a look at the workflow summary and we see our new canceled task and the permission and everything is right within our summary panel. Looks good. We'll click on save and commit these changes back. So finally to wrap this up and put a bow on it, let's go and check out the new map going and looking at my activities workspace I'll take a look at the workflow actions and I'll just click on show map we'll see our new workflow map and there's our new canceled state down at the bottom